Recently, on this channel, you would have seen Chippins. All the way to hole out from 70 yards. It surprised me, but today I'm bringing you a video on how you can improve your short game. And come out a touch hot there. <laughs> I mean, does it start any better than that? Hello and welcome back to Josh on the YouTube. Today, we're gonna be teaching you guys four different shots that you can use in your short game. Now, if you can master these four shots, you're gonna be well suited for any course that you play, any shot that you need to hit. So, what are these shots? Number one is gonna be the basic chip shot, just a simple standard chip shot. We can use any club for that, but it's just gonna be a simple technique. Number two is gonna be the putt and run. Um, speaks for itself. You know, we turn our wedges or a five iron into a putter and we simply put a putt and run on it. Number three is gonna be bunker play. Pretty important when you're out on the course to get this one mastered because if you find yourself in a bunker, you do not wanna be stuck in there for three, four shots. You wanna get out, get it close to the flag, make your up and down and run. Number four is gonna be the flop shot. Now, I don't really like practicing this one and even talking about it because I think if you're hitting a flop shot, you've hit a really bad shot into the green. You should never have to hit a flop shot. You should always be leaving yourself an easy chip shot with plenty of green to work with. And I think that's key in noticing that short game is as easy as you wanna make it because if you're leaving yourself simple chip shots all round, you're gonna be making a bunch more up and downs, but I'll teach you the flop shot for emergencies only. So a basic chip shot, what are the fundamentals to this? Now, we're gonna keep it super, super simple. Stance is gonna be pretty narrow. I don't want the stance any wider than kind of two club heads, maybe one and a half, but you know, we want a nice little stance. We're not going for a full swing. We just want a nice little stance, maybe a club width apart. Number two, a really simple one is gonna be, have this shaft up the lead arm. So this is just such a great tip. Um, I, I love this and it makes chipping just so, so easy. If we can control this position here and return it back to that point, let the club overtake the hands there, we're gonna hit some beautiful chip shots. So one position I like to feel when I do a lot of short game is a relaxed left arm as I come through the ball. So I don't wanna drive and have the left arm come off the body. We almost wanna feel the left arm come round. It's a nice relaxed left arm. The elbow's kind of pinched in here and the club is now pointing towards the target. We don't wanna see that position come through because we're just driving too much with the arms there. So let's try and get that position through impact. And you know, this is gonna allow you to just use the bounce, turn through, and this is always a popular position for me. If I get into this position, I know I've hit a good chip shot. So this is a very good key fundamental to remember that position there. Let the club overtake the hands and turn through. So let's get into that good setup. Club width apart with the feet. Setup should be pretty straight as well. I don't want you aiming miles right. I don't want you aiming miles left. You know, we're pretty much aiming down the target line. I kind of like the feet to be at maybe a hair open, but my coach would tell me off for that. Right, so we're now, all we're gonna think of is just let this club overtake the hands and get that soft elbow as we turn through. A little bit diggy, the club just kind of dug in there, but a great chip shot. A little bit diggy, a little bit drivey, but that might have been the lie. I don't want to make excuses, but let's see if we can get this one a little bit more nippier. That's kind of a bad example, that one there. Good shot, though. So, a lot more nipped, come out a lot higher, a lot softer. And you can see, barely bruised the ground there. That's a good sign that we're controlling that low point. We're not getting drivey with the hands. You know, that is what we want from these shots. Also as well to notice the weight's kind of, for me, I'd say 55% on this lead side. I'm not massively over this way, but I'd say 55%. I'm just kind of noticing I'm a touch forward. Look at that club turn around the body. 
Beautiful, you can see they're coming out nice and high, nice and soft. I'm using a 60 degree here. We can use any club for this technique. So let's go to my DTB 52. I use DTB wedges, awesome, best in the business. Shout out my mate, Danny Brennan. Um, I don't know how he's designed the most perfect wedge, but he's done it. Um, I use 52, 56 and 60. That's not the actual loft that they play. I bend them to 49, 53 slash 54 and 59 degrees. So they're not what they say on the tin, but right, we're gonna do the same technique. We got 52 degree here. So as I say, once you've mastered this technique, you can do this with kind of any club. So we just know that our landing point's gonna be a touch shorter with this one as it's gonna release out a bit more and just played an, a low drivey one. Ooh, not bad. But you can see we're not creating massive divots. We're just bruising the turf with that one. And once you master that technique for the basic chip shot, you can pretty much do that with any club in the bag. So that's number one complete. Let's move on to the putt and run. Okay, number two, the putt and run. <laughs> this one is an absolute cheat code. And if you're not using this, you need to get on it ASAP. So. We've got a five iron here, Tacomo 301 CB five iron, and I am just gonna use a putting technique. We're not gonna change anything. We're gonna go into our putter setup. So I wanna notice this triangle here with my arms, and we just wanna rock it back and forward. See the wrists aren't bending there, keeping them nice and solid. We're just using that putting technique, and it should be super, super simple. So we're in that putter position. And we're just going to rock the shoulders back and forward. And there it is a little bit steamy on that one, but you can see, you know, that is an absolute cheat code. Just don't really feel like I'm going to hit a bad one with that. Don't be afraid to get the hands a touch higher as well. Get that heel off the floor. This kind of stops that duff shot. So, you know, if you're someone that claws it, you know, getting your claw grip, that feels awful for me because I don't claw it, but let me just get a couple of, yeah, that don't feel too bad. All right, let's have a little claw on that one. And there we go, claw grip, putt and run. Let's go cack-handed, just in case there's any of you cack-handed putters out there. So very important to notice that whatever your putting grip is or whatever your style is, get into that position, you know, get into that putting posture and just putt it down there. And look at how easy that is. Might go in, or oh, it would have if it had the speed. So yeah, super easy. This one's an absolute cheat code. If you're not using it, make sure you get on it. Let's try and end on a hold one out, shall we? Come on. Break in there, break in there, break. Ooh, but four pretty decent shots. Great shot if you've just got something a little bit in front of you that you don't really want to putt over. Just gives it that little bit of oomph over what's ever in front of you. That was a five iron, but as I say, simply you can use that with pretty much any club in the bag. If you want to go to a freewood and do that, you can. Um, so pretty simple one, but a bit of a cheat code. Let's move on to the next one. So number three is bunker play. Let's talk bunker play. I like to imagine like a five pound note around the ball. So I'm just drawing a little square around it. And my main focus is to take this whole square. We don't want to go ball first and then sand. We want to almost hit a few inches behind the ball and splash it out. That's why you can see these big long swings and it comes out super high and soft. So hands are going to go lower. Club head is going to open up. With a 60 you open it actually adds loft. It doesn't open the face. So very important to notice you don't need to aim left. You can aim square and it won't go to the right because you're just adding loft. So feet are gonna shuffle in. We're gonna get a little bit lower to the ground. Hands are a little bit lower, face is open. And now we're gonna splash out that five pound note. A little bit more sand than what I expected, but no mulligans on this channel. A little bit heavy on that one. So we now know that five pound note is gonna get a bit smaller. We're going to get a little bit closer to the ball. And there we go. 
a beautiful shot on that one. And just quite a bit of sand. That's another thing as well, why you shuffle the feet in, is to kind of judge the sand, you know. Normally when you're up against the lip, um, you know, your ball finishes here, you can kind of see there's not really a great deal of sand up here. As you move down off of the lip, you know, you're gonna have to play these ones a little bit different to how you're playing these ones. So this one we're actually gonna get maybe not so low, a little bit more nippy on this one. Kind of a tough shot that one. You can hear from that sound nice and hard. Um, you know, just a little bit nippier on that one. This one, we can get a little bit more splashy. The swing's gonna have to get longer, a bit more speed. And there we go. So that is bunker play. Very important one, you master that. Um, if you really, really struggle with bunker play, I think the main focus is get out. But that is a few things of how I master it. And it's all about assessing that lie. That's why you see the shuffle in the feet. You're feeling how deep that sand is. Um, you know, obviously if the ball's closer to the lip of the bunker, it's probably gonna be less. As it comes down, there's probably gonna be a bit more. So hence the first one it was a little bit heavy, a lot of sand, but no mulligans on this channel. Let's talk the super flop shot. This one is for emergencies only. So the super flop shot, you've made it to the end. This is the emergency use only one. So first off, I just wanna say that with the flop shot is a very, very high risk shot. I think you need to assess what's in front of you, what you're going over, and kind of where the miss is when you're looking at a flop shot. So this flag's actually in quite a nice position for this shot, but obviously first look at this shot, we don't want to go in the sand. Now, I'm not saying stand over the ball and say, don't hit it in the sand, don't hit it in the sand. But when I'm playing this shot, if the pin was say six or seven feet over the bunker, my first initial thought would be, let's land it in a position where we're actually giving ourselves a chance. I'm not literally trying to land it on the lip and play for that perfect shot. I'm trying to land it maybe 10 foot over the lip, just a little bit safe so that I give myself a chance for the par. We're not then gonna make a double mistake, make a double bogey out of nothing. You know, this is kind of a, a poor shot you've hit into the green, except that, you know, bogey's not a bad score from here. So that's why I say about this shot, you, you need to have it in the locker, but it's a super high risk shot. So let's talk about it. Very similar to the bunker shot. We're gonna open the face. We're gonna get a little bit lower to the ground again, and hands go lower. And my weight is actually gonna be about 60% on this front leg. And I'm literally just gonna turn around it. And the move is I wanna wrap this club around my body as long as I can, as, as quick as I can, sorry. I don't wanna kind of drag it out, leaving it out here, kind of similar to the chip shot we spoke about earlier. You get that same release pattern, release it through, let the club overtake the hands. And one thing is keep the loft on the face. We don't wanna let this face turn over. We wanna keep the loft on the club face so that the loft can present to the ball and get it popping up super high. So let's get nice and low with 60, 40 in weight. And this one's going to the moon. Very similar to a bunker shot, taking a nice hefty divot, but it's a risky shot, you know? Um, so, you know, that's a very extreme version of it. I'd rarely play that in a tournament. I'd probably play more of like a, a safer, let's say safer flop shot. Um, kind of not so much speed, you know, kind of one like that. It's not so high. Um, it's not of high risk. That first one, like, it could go five yards in front of you, but it looks super cool if it comes off. Just for all the green keepers in the chat, just repairing the divots there, very important. I just said chat like I'm on some live stream. I'm not, I'm on a YouTube video in the comment section. Right, let's try and play a couple more. And as I say, this is really for emergencies only, so. You know, we're just not going as, as extreme on this one. Probably won't go as high. But, you know, you still get the kind of same picture from that shot. Kind of a nice one as well. I get like a, a draw feeling with it as well sometimes. I think when you get a bit fady that way, um, you know, it kind of has that steep angle of attack and pops up, but it's high risk. You know, when you get that draw motion, on the ball, kind of the club coming from the inside. 
you know, you kind of get away with it a bit more. The shallow of angle attack isn't, it, it's not as steep, you know, it's a lot shallower. So that one's for emergencies. Don't use that all the time. It looks great, it looks very cool, but it's very risky. We're gonna end this video off with a drill I like to do every time when I practice short game. It's just called hole out. Don't leave until you hole out. So we're gonna see how many attempts this takes. This is a pretty simple chip shot, quite a bit of break, but we should hole it at some point. So let's see how many balls it takes. See how painful this gets. Probably got an hour of sunlight, so we're on a, we're on a clock. Ball number three. Um, what I would say about that is it trains the brain to hole out. We're not thinking make up and down, we're thinking hole it. And I think that takes your mind off of like, don't duff it, don't fin it. I'm thinking hole it, you know? Um, so a really good mindset is, you know, don't, don't think about your technique so much, just think hole it. Um, and that, that's how these guys get so good is we're literally thinking, over them chip shots, how can I make this chip? Read the green. Um, I'm not trying to make up and down, we're trying to hold them. So a super, super good drill to do. Um, and if you enjoyed that video, you learned anything new, please be sure to smash the like button. Subscribe as it really, really helps me out. Love to absolutely every single one of you supporting the channel. It means the world to me. See you all for the next one.